Rent controlled apartment buildings are getting gobbled up by mega landlords who then proceed to force these tenants out of their homes. Now the latest story comes from New York City and the state's attorney general Letitia James not too pleased with one mega corporate landlord that has been breaking all sorts of laws to maximize their profit because that's what they do. Now in Brooklyn, a company called Inc Property Group bought dozens of rent stabilized buildings in low income communities of color with the intention of illegally deregulating affordable housing for profit, the Attorney General's office noted. Through a variety of illegal activities, Inc forced out rent stabilized tenants so their units could be offered at market rate. So Rent control laws do vary state to state. It sounds like New York has similar laws to what we have here in California and in particular in LA. So for instance, buildings that are of a certain age. So if it was built in somewhere in the 1970s, for instance, it is a rent controlled building. Meaning that the landlord cannot increase the rent on the tenants um, more than a certain percentage and the percentage is low. So when there is a rent increase, it's not going to force people out of their homes. You know, It's a small increase that usually keeps up with inflation uh, related to the utilities and upkeep that the landlord has to pay, right? And so what tends to happen is landlords start to make the living conditions in that building so unbearable that people end up leaving because they can't take it anymore. And then once someone leaves, you're able to then rent out that unit to a new tenant at market value. And as we know, rent has really skyrocketed all across the country and market value is not affordable for a lot of people. So after Inc bought a building, it would start to offer tenants buyouts. We'll give you a little money if you leave basically. If the tenant refused, they wouldn't let up. They even paid a commission of between $2,500 to $5,000 to employees who secured tenant buyouts. Now here is one of the tenants who was actually targeted by Inc Properties. She spoke out about this practice during a press conference and I think what she had to say here is telling. Let's watch. They continue to harass us, uh, notices, eviction notices. In recent years, maybe the last two years, they've been giving us, trying to buy us out. Um, we are still there. They will not repair. And if they do, it's a Band-Aid. They will put a Band-Aid on whatever breaks because we are very outspoken. And that's why they come and repair. Uh, uh, we get an exterminator and maybe every, every so often. Their main goal is to get us out knock the building down and rebuild. And affordable housing does not exist because if you cannot afford to pay $4,000, that is not affordable housing. That was Gladys and she's right about that. $4,000 a month for an apartment is not affordable. Not affordable to the vast majority of working Americans in this country. And she mentioned there specifically the conditions that they were dealing with. And the conditions were intentional to basically push these tenants out if they refuse to take the buyouts. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what the, this investigation found in regard to the living conditions. To deal with people who wouldn't move out, the landlords would let the buildings devolve into a state of disrepair according to court records. In 2019, residents told the Brooklyn Eagle that they'd found mold and rats in some of the empty apartments owned by Inc. And if you think that's bad, it's about to get worse. The number of housing maintenance code violations across the Inc property group portfolio was and is exceedingly high, court documents said. In fact, Inc averaged 26 violations per building. During the time the AG and Attorney General investigated them. This included 115 Class C violations or immediately hazardous violations for conditions such as defective window guards, lead based paint and locked cellar doors blocking access to buildings, heating systems. No, I mean like it was intentional, they wanted to drive 
tenants out, make it so unbearable, unbearable to live there. And so then once they drive the tenant out, what can they do? They just do light renovations because that's what the New York rent control laws require them to do. And once they're done doing the light renovations, they can go ahead and charge a new tenant a much higher rent and they make a lot more money. Let's give you a specific example. The landlords bought a six unit building in Brooklyn that was fully rent stabilized. The legal regulated rents for those apartments ranged from $911.75 to $1,099 per month, according to court documents. The landlords bought out five of the six tenants, renovated the apartments, then brought in new tenants and charged them double, okay? $2,200. So you can understand the uh, motivations here, the incentive to do what this particular corporate landlord did. And look, I know that there's a tendency to treat all landlords as if they're all the same, right? But there is a difference between a small, like a mom and pop landlord, right? And a corporate landlord. And what we're seeing all across the country right now, and certainly in places like Los Angeles and New York, is these smaller landlords are getting gobbled up by major corporate landlords who are far worse. It's not a person who owns the building who's more responsive and actually takes pride in the building. It's it's a corporation. It's a faceless person. It's a faceless corporation that doesn't care about you and just wants to maximize profits. And so while the end goal is to get to a point where we have affordable an abundance of affordable housing and we're not reliant on the whims of landlords and whatever they want to charge. Um, at the end of the day, I think the number one thing we need to do is protect these rent stabilized buildings and ensure that these corporate landlords stop doing what they've been doing for quite some time now. I wanna give you some more information because thanks to this investigation by New York's Attorney General, Letitia James, there were consequences for Inc properties, but this is just scratching the surface. I'm glad there were consequences for Inc properties, but corporate landlords are a huge problem. During the pandemic, thanks to the Federal Reserve offering cheap money to corporations and banks, you have private equity firms buying up entire neighborhoods of single family homes. And then what do they do with it? Well, they rent them out because they want to really corner the rental market industry. Like that is what they wanna do. And they abuse their tenants, they don't care for their tenants at all. Something needs to be done about that issue. But when it comes to ink properties, here's what happened in the conclusion of this investigation. The landlords just reached a settlement with the New York City Attorney General where it would pay 1.75 million to maintain sustainable housing in the city and $400,000 to the tenants it had screwed over. A lot more needs to be done. But I will say it is rare to see any corporation face any consequences for their wrongdoing. And I'm happy that at least in this case, there was an investigation and there were some consequences. But will it stop these major corporate landlords from doing what they've been doing? Probably not. There needs to be more of a deterrence. And I would venture to say that the profits that they're able to make off of these practices outweigh the penalties they end up having to pay if they get investigated. So dealing with this on a case by case basis isn't enough. There needs to be a systemic change, especially in how we think about housing in America.